So about a month ago, I actually end up getting an interesting call from my drummer. His name is Carson. He's an incredible drummer. And he tells me that him and his wife are actually going to be road tripping to downtown Nashville for the 4th of July to see some of the bands, to see the fireworks, just taking the whole 4th of July Nashville experience. And I was like, I'm down. Let's go do this. So we drive down there. The place is packed. It's super interesting. And he tells me once we get there, hey, Mike, by the way, Brad Paisley is like the big performer that they always have. And I'm like, that's really cool. I've had sort of this like renaissance over the past year with country music. I've gotten into like Urban and Hunter Hayes and some really great guitar players, but everyone keeps telling me that's just pop country. The real guys, if you want to get into like some of Paisley's old stuff, that's where you really got to hit. So some of the bands who are opening for him start playing and I start anticipating him more and more and seeing like, is he really going to blow my mind? Like people say he will. And the guy who opens for him is actually named Ben Rector, who's an artist that I really love, a Nashville guy. He's one of the most underrated songwriters in the industry. And as Ben Rector is playing these really sharp chords, playing some of the coolest covers I've ever seen, it starts to rain. And it starts to rain really, really, really hard. I'm talking some torrential downpour type stuff. And as it's raining, the event staff for downtown Nashville 4th of July apparently decides it's time to quote closing time to us because they tell us you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. And so I'm thinking to myself, is Brad Paisley really worth seeing? Because I'm raining, I'm wet, I'm just not necessarily having a good time. One of my favorite artists just got rained out. I'm sure we won't be able to see him again. And Carson tells me, he looks me in the eye, Mike, you cannot leave because this is going to be like world shattering for you. So I put on my big boy pants and I'm like, I'll stay for Paisley. There's no way he'll be anywhere near good enough to warrant turning what I thought was going to be a great day into what I'm now rainy and wet and just standing in this random boot store just trying to avoid lightning. But it's the 4th of July and I'm in a semi good mood. So the lightning storm ends. We end up making our way back. We're very, very close to the front. This guy with a cowboy hat comes out. I realize it's Brad Paisley. He's that guy and he starts playing and about three songs in I completely notice this is some of the best guitar playing I've ever seen in my entire life and that includes live shows YouTube anything so this guy finishes playing he plays like 10 to 15 songs I'm having the time of my life I walk to my car after that I'm looking up every single song in his discography on my phone just to see like is he as good on the records as he is live I drive all the way home and I do something that I hadn't done in weeks at that point I pull out my Telecaster and initially upon pulling this thing out I was like it's time I'm going to be the greatest country player ever but the more and more I played it I started to recognize why people call it one of the most versatile guitars ever made or some people call it the most versatile guitar to have ever been made because there's so much that this thing can do and I started to think about other Telecasters like not even just the range of Tele's that I've owned but the different things that are out there and how many different things not just Fender but other companies have come out with and what makes the T-style guitar that Leo Fender invented all those years ago. So outstanding. All right, so here's the deal. The range of tellies that I have is actually quite weird. And I actually end up keeping this one in the PRS case, which it's not an NF53. I promise you that. I tried one out, but I don't own one. This is a Fender Player Series, which I do think I actually like more than the Player Series Strat. I really do love the Player Series Strat. I put the Kunafe pickups in there. I keep switching the pickups for some reason. But this right here, it's got a really flat neck, like nine and a half inch radius. I don't know. I don't really take it out of the case that much because I have the pink telly over there that I end up playing most days. But this is really cool. Here's the deal about tellies and just getting tone. I feel like, especially when it comes to country, the Fender amp is the one that everybody thinks about. But honestly, I think about a telly with an AC30 because you can just get that glassy tone, especially for the cleans combined with the fact that the bridge pickup has all that character. I'd honestly, if I was on the road, I would probably prefer to bring a telly with an AC15, get the top boost. I wouldn't even like need a tube screen or anything. You'd really just go for it. Hold on. So the reason I got the Sunburst is because I've only seen John Frujanti play it like once or twice. 
But when he plays a telly, he has the sunburst one. And the times I've seen him, he just goes ham on this thing. This is hands down the most special guitar I own, and that is a fact. I really like the Relic job, and this is like the next kind of step up in price wise. Like just in finding out more and more about telly players who aren't just country guys, I found out about this dude named Keith Richards. You might've heard about him. And not just about Keith Richards, cause I'm not like a super big Rolling Stones fan, but one, he's a phenomenal player once I learn more and more about him. Two, he uses open G tuning, which is what this is in right now. And I honestly think this is the first time I've ever used open G tuning in my life. So this is my favorite telly that I've ever played or owned. It is, I have more sentimental value with this than any guitar I've ever had. I will say, however, if we wanted to go a step up, I don't actually own a telly that's more expensive than this one, which would be in like the $1,300 price range. So we would actually need to go visit a friend. Uh, my thoughts on this thus far, I've had it, it's relatively new. Um, okay. I've used it on a couple sessions. See, this is my friend, Andrew. It's my favorite guitar. And he's actually the reason I'm a YouTuber, but that's another story for another day. That, that you've I ever have, owned? That I have, right. It's my, well, you know, I think guitar players and musicians kind of have eras of mm -hmm. favorite guitars. Right now, this is the era of this Telecaster, and this is an American vintage, and it's absolutely beautiful. It plays incredibly well. The neck feels amazing. I, all, I used to think, for some reason, that the necks were like much thicker than strats and that was my takeaway and how I categorized tellies was like they have fat necks and I don't like fat necks but this neck feels fantastic plays incredibly well sounds so good through a Princeton through an AC30 um, it's great on rock like that really surprised me I also kind of associated it with like chicken picking uh, country mm -hmm. but it's very versatile stays in tune sounds amazing very flexible and simple to use. The pickup selector is something that I noticed like literally immediately because like you were saying, like you're playing a Strat and I'm a Strat guy. I use Strats just because like those are the players that I grew up, I guess, in my guitar journey listening to the Mayors, the Claftons, the Stevie Ray Vaughns. But just being a funk guy, doing a crap ton of funk stuff, not only do I hit the pickup selector, but I also hit the volume knob. And when I'm practicing really hard, which is something that I need to work on just in general, I always notice I'll get through my scales from like the low end to the high end. By the time I'm on the high end, the volume knob will be at like two or three. And that's not an affront to strats, that's more on me. But also it's weird because the first time that I actually picked up a telly and I saw one as a guitar player, I thought it was the ugliest thing I had ever seen. I just associated it with ugliness and country which were the two things that i didn't care about at all and then i started growing into country and i was like okay maybe this thing sounds good for country but i still don't like the way it looks and the more i got one and i played one i was like this is incredible Okay, so these two guitars may look exceedingly similar, but they are actually pretty different because right now, in my right I have the Player Series Strat, and in my left I have what you just saw, which was the American Vintage Series, which literally everyone was talking about last year. I remember seeing the first like Matthew Scott video and then Mary Spender had one, and I was like, what is this guitar and why is everyone talking about it? This thing is literally phenomenal. Probably one of the best Telecasters that I've ever played in my life. I've never gone up to the custom shops for the tellies, but I don't know how it can get much better than this. The neck is like way more rounded because it has like 7.25 as the radius, I believe. And it has like the 63 vintage pickups, which I'm starting to like more and more. Like this is a Telecaster, bro. And that might not mean much, but that's all I have to say about it. As soon as you start playing, you can just hear the bite. Like that is crazy. 
And that can be anything. That can be like rock or country. But if you were to start soloing. Like that's just excellent. Like that just sounds unbelievable. This one definitely seems more dirty or blues rockish. And this one seems like classic rock and roll. If I were to like compare the two. Just because, like mm -hmm. I said, way more output, way more dirt. All the reasons why I hated the Telecaster going in, like I said before, when I first picked one up when I was first a guitar player, was because I thought it was ugly and because I thought it was just a country guitar. And both of those things have just been proven wrong. Like, this thing can do so much. You even see, like, nowadays with a lot of modern players doing the Midwest emo. And even if you go back, the Keith Richards with the classic rock or, like, even Jimmy Page and Led Zeppelin. I don't necessarily always think of him as a telly player, but he used a telly as well as using a Les Paul. Not only are there so many variations, just, like, genre-wise and tonally with the telly, but, like... There's so many alternatives price-wise. You can get the American Vintage and go all the way up, but the Layer Series sounds phenomenal. And then I also have my 357, like that custom one, the pink one that I play, no one even knows about. And I'm sure Godin and other companies are doing crazy stuff with their tellies. So I really like Telecasters. Let's say that. I really, <laughs> really like Telecasters. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. It was super fun to be able to check out, especially the American Vintage Series for the first time and just some of the other tellies that I haven't touched in a minute. If you want to know anything more about these guitars, you can get them from Sweetwater. The links are in the description. It's one of the best ways to support the channel, if that's something you want to do. Or if you're just curious about any of the gear or the tones, make sure to check it out. Like and subscribe if you had a good time. And most important of all, like most importantly, have a fantastic day.